All right, look out for Charlie here. I want to talk about some stuff. Um, you guys remember my uh, last Shuanella slash graphene video that I put out where I explained how this is growing on the skin. It's basically creating a electrical circuit, an antenna, and a battery, if you will. I basically made the claim that they were using Shuanella and a fungal slash self-replicating graphene to do this. As I was doing some research recently, I ran across this video and I and I love when these smaller schools or universities or research groups release videos like this because it tells you what's going on while other things have gone dark. So the fact is is that they think they've discovered something where uh, another group has discovered this a decade or decades ago and has been putting it to use where these guys research it, put the put the information out and think uh, no harm, no foul. But um, I talked about Shuanella and it being programmable, so let's check it out. For a long time we knew that certain organisms like Shuanella, the organism that's sort of the model system in my lab, for a long time we've known that Shuanella can move electrons from its cell basically to, to other surfaces, to external solid surfaces. And then a few years ago there was this dramatic discovery that cells also might be able to basically build wires to the surfaces that they breathe. Okay, do you remember the, the wires that I showed you guys growing from people's skin? And uh, especially uh, people who have quote-unquote more gallons and people who are dealing with uh, electronic harassment. A lot of this stuff can be uh, almost invisible on people's skin and, until it starts to come off. Here's a couple examples. Here's after it's been rolled off the skin and you can see like a bunch of what look like fibers or wires almost. Here's one growing up a piece of this stuff. And here's stuff that is growing up the skin. I'll put a link to uh, my older videos and that older video to check out if you haven't seen it before. Let's continue the video. The idea being that they can produce these hair-like appendages basically out of their cell bodies. So here's an example of a single uh, cell of Shuanella anidensis MR1. So this is this uh, uh, white uh, cell right here. And the hair-like things that you see coming out of it, each one of those is uh, an example of a bacterial nanowire. If you're a bacterium, You just said that's an example of a bacterial nanowire. Shuanella, you build this wire out of your cell body that goes all the way to the thing that you're breathing, be it uh, a solid surface or the electrode of a microbial fuel cell or something else, and you use that bacterial nanowire to transfer electrons just like we would use a breathing tube in order to breathe oxygen. Even though there was a lot of evidence that these bacterial nanowires are involved in extracellular electron transport, basically in moving electrons from the cell to the surface, uh, there was really no direct evidence for it. So what we did specifically in our recent paper is we've used a lot of the tools of nanotechnology to be able to probe electron transport specifically along okay. the... Okay, this is... The, okay, see what they're doing? See what they're doing here? They're, they're touching it, these bacterial nanowires, to a circuit board. This is exactly what I talked about four or five years ago when I said that they were creating what I called a dirty board, which is basically a haphazard circuit board on the skin to create sensations, jolts, twitches, and just monitoring in general. This can all be done with what I call the dirty board. Individual bacterial nanowires. So what we're looking at is uh, a single a Shonella anidensis MR1 cell and we're looking at a bacterial nanowire that is secreted by that cell and what we did was we directly wrote uh, platinum electrodes. So these are these metal bars that you're looking at here. Directly writing electrodes along a single filament that's being, uh, that's secreted by a single cell. And then measured the electron transport directly that way, which is finally conclusive proof that these bacterial nanowires do in fact act as conductive appendages. Conclusive proof that these act as conductive appendages. Now this isn't a new video. I just love finding these things because it proves exactly what I was talking about. Now, if that doesn't convince you that they don't need to point anything at you, I don't know what will. And that's all being controlled by Wi-Fi, which uh, brings me to a few different things. Um, one, this is off topic a little, but it, it ties in. 
I love when they out themselves like this. This is an example of what it would look like if you could see Wi-Fi signals. Okay? If you check it out, the, the rings. Now, <laughs> if you go to these clouds that have been manipulated somehow, look at that. It looks exactly like the Wi-Fi ring. So the Wi-Fi is and the signals are manipulating physical objects. Which brings me to the whole idea of the God's Eye camera. A lot of people think there are cameras in their home or somebody's watching them when the God's Eye camera is Wi-Fi and cell signals itself. They are used as sonar like a bat and it's anywhere that the Wi-Fi and cell signals are they can see like God's eye which allows them to monitor everything and it doesn't stop at walls this is how they're able to monitor people in their homes and uh, convince them that there are cameras in their home and they're being watched 24 hours a day they can tell where they're at especially after the person's been sensitized with these uh, chewinella and graphene dirty boards. It's on their skin. It's not going anywhere until you take it off. And once you take it off, you stop feeling the physical effects of it. Now, a lot of people think, oh, I'm cured, but that's not the case. You're always going to be coming into contact with it because it's everywhere. So you just have to change your lifestyle and kind of fight it off. A lot of times I have to repeat myself, but that's just the way it is. And if, if you want to learn more, do your own research and or go back and watch my videos. I'll put a link to my older videos below. I can't get everybody up to speed through questions. It's, it's impossible. But uh, in my opinion, it takes years for this stuff to build up in the system. So when you do like protocols and get rid of this stuff, you're knocking years of buildup off and that's why the symptoms seem to vanish it takes years for this stuff to build up and to come online so to speak all this stuff ties in together this has been experimented with extensively and all this stuff builds up into one thing people have to get very 21st century about this and there are a lot of people out there that are pumping out very 20th century information on this stuff and what it's doing is it's keeping people in the dark big time you know when I first started putting out videos people still believed that people were following them around with like handheld weapons and sticking things out of their cars and following them around which is similar to what the NSA did to Paul Benowitz when they pointed things at his house or beaming signals into his house in 1978 Okay, it was 1989 when um, CNN did a, a whole news article on the LIDA machine and wireless brain signals. So, you know, that age has come and gone, and that was a long time ago. You know, there's progress, but we need to make more progress in how people think about this. All right, lastly, I'm going to change the subject. Somebody recently said, you know, you, you're really caught up in the... Uh, audio voice aspect of this whole thing yes I am and there's a reason why and it's because uh, a jolt to the arm if that's all somebody dealt with wouldn't do anything uh, twitches pains would suck but they wouldn't do anything the audio aspect of this is what causes people to do things against their will, what manipulates them, what scares the shit out of them, what puts them in a stage of bewilderment that makes them easily pliable. It is the most dangerous aspect of what is happening to people with this. Now you have to remember that James Holmes thought he heard Obama's voice and he thought that they were coming from beams from the television set. Now here in uh, Reddit, in the paranormal section mind you, is a help I'm hearing Obama's voice. It says. Hello, I'm a 20 year old from Georgia and I've been hearing Obama's voice for the last hour in my head. It doesn't stop, but sometimes other voices sound at the same time for some seconds saying random syllables. And yes, the other voices that speak say the same as Obama's. 
I suspect that this is something paranormal. See how this goes? Now go back and watch my Your House Isn't Haunted shit. Because this is how it always happens. I don't do drugs and my mental health has been perfect as of yet. So everybody's like ready to like snap. It's like, come on, man. I already did an appointment with a psychologist for tomorrow. Uh, but I am honestly scared. Now this is what's awesome. Because they, they post this on fucking Reddit. And all these blue-pilled motherfuckers come to save the day. This sounds psychological or possibly medical in nature. Consult the medical professional, please. You know, maybe you have a video... Listen to this. Maybe you have a YouTube video running. I don't know. Is he saying that you will get shit for free? You know, what have you been smoking? You know, this is... I'm, the last place that you want to go for advice is fucking Reddit in the paranormal section. All right, but check this out. This is the same thing that happened to James Holmes. It just happened to some random motherfucker. You know, if everybody knew what this was, it wouldn't have the same effect. But people are ignorant, and they are keeping people ignorant to this on purpose. All right, look out for Charlie.